Hi there again, Izzy from DigitalGoja.com showroom. Now we're going to take a look at the most asked questions about the Altura Photo Universal Flash for DSLRs. These are the questions that I checked on the internets. I went to Amazon, eBay, uh, Digital Goja's website, YouTube, customer service, emails and phone calls about the Altura Photo Universal Flash for DSLRs. We're going to try it out with the Nikon D7100, a very popular crop sensor camera from Nikon. We're going to go into how this works, the basic functions, and how it will work for you and your DSLR. Remember, this is universal, so it will function with most of today's DSLR cameras. And remember, if this video is helpful to you, hit me up with a like button underneath. And also subscribe to our channel for future sessions and questions like this. And also, if you have any further questions or comments, remember to leave them below. Without further ado, let's take a look at the basic questions on how to work with the Altura Photo Universal Strobe. How do I attach my Altura Photo Universal Speed Light for DSLRs? Well, on the D7100, first you want to make sure you remove the hot shoe cover. Put this somewhere nice and safe. Do not lose this. Very difficult to come by. Now I'm going to remove the Altura Photo Strobe from the little adapter stand that I had it set on. And notice how it has a nice metal foot and there is your single contact. Remember, this is a universal strobe. So it doesn't give you automation and it does not have TTL. So notice how it slides right on. You don't want to wiggle this side to side. You just push straight on so it goes no further and then turn the neural knob to lock it in place. Do not over tighten this, but just put it tight enough so it doesn't go flying off. And now we're going to go into our settings Notice how I have my camera set to manual. Yes, this is the preferred way to use a fully manual strobe is on manual. So now I'm going to set my shutter speed. I've noticed that for this strobe, it works best at 1 1 25th of a second. And then you set your aperture according to how far you're going to be shooting with your strobe. So I have my aperture and my shutter speed set. And once you have that, and you'll notice on the back of the LCD, your settings. Right now I have it set to 1 1 25th of a second. And I have it calibrated for my aperture to be at f4 because I'm working at a little bit further distance. And of course, once you activate your strobe and you have it set, you can start firing off and it will synchronize with your camera. How do I activate my Altura Photo Universal Strobe for DSLRs? Very simple. You already have your AA batteries in here. Turn the on button and wait for your power button to be red. When your power button is red, that means it's ready to fire. Notice how you have a test button right here. So you can try it out and see that the flash is strobing. And of course, you have your settings. And manual and your slave modes plus your power output. But once it's mounted on there and it's turned on, as soon as I depress the shutter, it'll fire off and it's synchronizing with my Nikon D7100. Does my Altura Photo Universal Flash for DSLRs come with a carrying pouch? Yes, it does. Really nice one. It's a nice soft fabric so it's meant not to damage or scratch the product it's lined on the inside and it's meant so that you can carry your strobe with you everywhere Let's remove it from which is also supplied your adapter stand and it fits right in you can take the stand in there with you also and notice it has a pull string on the top to keep it nice and secure this way you can put it into your favorite gadget bag and I've even seen some photographers actually loop these through the strap and carry it that way. But I prefer just putting it in my backpack and that way it's with me at all times.
Does my Altura Photo Universal Speed Light for DSLRs have a softening reflector for bounce photography? Yes, it does. It lives right here. Notice how you have to pull on this tab very gently. That brings out the wide angle diffuser and there is your bounce reflector card. Now gently push this back in so that you're not using the diffuser if you choose not to. And now you can bounce this straight up so it gives you the capability of controlling the light and giving you a softer diffusion. This is a very important feature when you're doing more advanced lighting photography when it comes to reflecting the light off of a subject matter so that you don't have harsh lighting this comes in very handy and again when you're through just push this in and that locks it in place be very gentle because it is a plastic but it's sturdy enough so it'll last you for many years as long as you maintain it properly does my Altura photo Universal speed light for DSLRs have a bounce capability? Yes, it does. It has a 90 degree bounce, which is great when you're doing portraits. Plus, you also have the swivel feature, 180 degrees. That way you can bounce it off reflectors, walls, columns, backdrops. You can be very creative with this. This way you have full control of how you want your strobe to be functioning. How do I change my power output on my Altura Photo Universal Speed Light for DSLRs? They made it very simple. You have a plus and a minus. The least powerful is 1 1 28th power. And you can move it all the way up, notice by pressing the plus, all the way up to 1 to 1 ratio, which is full power. Now, of course, you want to use the 1 to 1 ratio when you're working in extremely dark environments and at a greater distance. But remember, when you do that, that also slows down your recycle time. So now it takes longer for your flash to recycle. Notice how it's not ready yet. It's still waiting for it to power up again because it just shot at full power. When you have the red indicator, that means it's ready to go again. Now, if you want to do more rapid succession, you can cut down the power ratio, especially if you're working at a closer distance. So that way, your flash will synchronize faster and allow you to shoot more rapidly. What power source do I use for my Altura Photo Universal Flash for DSLRs? Well, it works with four standard AA batteries. I highly recommend using high amperage batteries, good quality, because again, flashes take a big punch out of a power source. If you notice when you open it up, you're going to notice on the inside, there it has the nomenclature on your polarities, your plus and minus settings for your batteries. Make sure you follow the instructions. You don't want to place these guys in here incorrectly because then you are going to have issues. Number one, to close the actual battery compartment. And number two, you might actually damage the unit. Now, there are some people that say, well, you know what? I really need to be able to shoot at high speed. Plus I'm doing a shoot that's gonna go on for hours and hours and I don't wanna stop and be swapping out batteries. Well, they also gave you an alternative. You have the capability of using an external power supply. This one happens to be the Altura FBE-1. This one is a replacement of the CPE-4 from Canon because this is the actual Canon port. Once you plug this in here, that locks it in place. And with this power pack, I now have the capability of working with eight additional AA batteries. This gives me a lot longer shooting period. So it can shoot at full power or at cut intervals, but it allows me to recycle faster and continue shooting without having to stop and swap out batteries. Make sure you work with higher amperage AA batteries or rechargeable nickel metal hydride or lithium disposables. Whatever you choose, you want to make sure you use the better quality batteries so that way you get years and years of use of your Altura Photo Universal Strobe. Does my Altura Photo Universal Speed Light for DSLRs have a diffuser? 
Yes, it does. And it's very simple to work with. It lives right here. Notice how you have a small tab. Pull on that and that brings down the wide angle diffuser. It also comes out with a reflector. You can push that in gently. Notice how I say gently, you wanna make sure because that's a piece of plastic that can be damaged if you're rough with it. But now you have a nice diffuser so you can work with wider angle perspective lenses or you can get a softer, less harsh light when you're working with close-ups or portraiture. Does the Altura Photo Universal Strobe for DSLRs have a high speed mode? Well, no it doesn't. It doesn't have high speed sync. That only comes with more of the advanced models that especially have the TTL capability. But if you want to shoot at fast burst, you can cut down the power ratio to as little as 1 1 28th. So if I'm using this for fill in and I'm working in an environment where I have to shoot rapidly, I can definitely do that. Now I'm going to set, again, I'm setting my D7100 to continue as low because that's about four frames per second and this guy should, especially with fresh batteries, you'll be able to keep up with it. But again, this is cutting down the power ratio so you're now using less intensity but you're working at a closer distance and you're being able to shoot on a, on a faster continuous mode. Does my Altura Photo Universal Strobe for DSLRs have a slave mode? Well, yes it does. And the nice thing about the D7100 is that you have a built-in strobe here. So when you pop this guy up, now we're going to set our Altura Flash to the S1 mode. So you're going to press the mode button until you light up the S1. Once you have the S1 activated, this is your standard slave mode when your flash is using full manual capability. So, I now have, now you have to keep this in mind. This is your sensor here. So this works on line of sight. So this sensor has to be aimed in the direction of your primary flash. But the beauty of it is that you have a swivel head. So if I need my light source to be aimed in a different direction, I can have the sensor aimed towards the main light source and then have the head swiveling. So now I can go ahead and fire off and notice I can be off the frame here, but it still synchronizes with it because it works with line of sight. So as long as this flash is being read by the sensor, it will fire off your Altura strobe. Now, this also has the capability of working with an external flash. So, if I now have a secondary flash mounted on my D7100, I can now set this flash on and this will be the primary flash source. Now, I prefer using my dedicated flashes on here on TTL. So, I set this flash to TTL but I have to change the mode on the Altura Universal. You have to switch it to S2. S2 is your slave mode for TTL from your primary flash. What it does is it doesn't look for the pre-flash that most TTLs flashes use to be able to guide the, the exposure. So it only shoots when the primary flash fires off. I know it's confusing, but if you have your primary flash, whether it's the one built into your D7100 or I happen to have an Altura ITTL flash here and this is set to TTL, you have to make sure you set this guide to S2. That way it's going to read it correctly. Again, again the same guidelines. You want this to be aimed at your primary flash because it's line of sight. So again, I can shoot from here and it's firing off this flash. So I can aim the flash this way. And even though I'm off the camera, I can still control this flash. Of course, you have to make sure that you have fresh batteries in here. My batteries are starting to die off, so it's taking a little bit longer to recycle. Plus I have it on full power. Let me cut down the power a bit here. Cut it down to 1 64th power. And now I should be able to fire much quicker. 
So again, you have full wireless capability, but again, this only works on line of sight. So you have to make sure that these guys are in contact as far as distance from each other. They have to be able to view each other. You can work anywhere. I've been able to work anywhere from 15, 20, 30 feet away and it still functions properly without any issues. But you have to keep in mind that you have to have this being aimed at your primary source. And again, the two settings, S1, S2. S1 for manual use for your primary flashes or S2 for your TTL mode. Does my Altura Photo Universal Flash for DSLRs have a PC input? Well, yes it does. Now, my D7100 does not. My D7100 basically is meant to work either wirelessly or with a TTL connector on the shoe. But, notice here on the side you have the little cover. And when you remove that, that's for your standard PC input. So if you do own some of the older Nikon cameras, and some of the larger professional ones like the D300S or the D700 or so, they do have a PC input for the fully manual flashes like the Altura Photo Universal. Can I use my Altura Photo Universal strobe for DSLRs on my D7100 while I have the trigger set set to camera remote? No, it really doesn't function that way. Let me show you why. First, we need to get the receiver, which is this guy, the one that has the shoe on top. This is now going to be placed on your camera as if this was your strobe. Remember, it slides straight on. Don't wiggle it from side to side. And then just lightly turn the knob to tighten it in place. You don't want to over tighten this because you don't want to cause any hap. You don't want to cause any stress on the hot shoe or on the mount. Now, we're going to get this cable, which is the one that plugs into your GPS. And we're going to look on the side here of our D7100. And notice that you have a little indicator that says GPS. So you open up that little port cover and you're going to put this end into it straight on. Don't wiggle it on. Don't force it. It just slides right in. So, line it up. And it attaches straight in. Again, don't wiggle it from side to side and don't push it. You don't want to damage that port. That's a very expensive repair. Now, on this side, we're going to plug this one that looks like a headphone jack right onto the side of the receiver. And on top, I'm going to set it to camera. Remember, you have three settings. Flash, off, set it to the camera one. Now I have my camera set activated. And I'm now going to use this guy, which is the transmitter. So when you press this guy's button now, notice how you can fire the camera. This is great because now you have full control of this camera at a distance. But a lot of photographers want to do a shortcut and be like, well, I want to be able to also fire the flash. So what they do is they mount the flash on here, lock it in place, and then they turn the strobe on. And what happens? When you fire your camera, this is only receiving a signal here correctly. So it's not synchronizing properly up here where your hot shoe is. So you might be able to get it to fire off. The camera still works, but the flash is not syncing properly. You're not gonna get the correct exposure. Now, the other alternative is, if you do happen to have a camera that has a PC standard port, and this is a connection that has been around from way back in the day. Notice this connector right here. This is for a standard PC port. Our D7100 does not have that connection. But there are other models out there, some of the older D70s and some of the older D100s, and then of course the full frames like the D810s and the D750s do have this connection. So if you plug this in to your camera, 
and it, again it does not have to be on this hot shoe you can put it on a bracket you can mount it on the side on a bracket or you can put it on here but when you have that connection created then you are getting the proper synchronization and you will be able to get the correct exposure but here you got to remember this is only controlling your camera so it's always going to fire the camera but sometimes it won't fire the flash it'll mishap and it'll give you the incorrect exposure so unfortunately it's not meant to work that way but you do have a workaround if you have a camera that has that pc port connection